YouTube channel Civil Edu Next. Myself Maitri Dave, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today's topic is Traffic Engineering. So without wasting much time, let us begin our second lecture for Traffic Engineering. First, let us recall all the topics that we have already discussed in previous lecture, which are Introduction to Traffic Engineering, then Traffic Characteristics and Traffic Studies and Analysis. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss traffic regulation. Then our second topic is traffic control devices. And lastly, we will discuss intersections in detail. So let's begin with the first topic, introduction to traffic regulations. Traffic regulations can be defined as the rules and regulation which guide the behavior or action of road user. This is in place in order to prevent accidents and enhance the free flow of traffic. Some traffic rules and regulations are like do not drink and drive and users of road should avoid to alcohol before and while driving. In order to have safe traffic operations on road, it is essential to impose adequate traffic regulations. So basically it is divided into three parts. First is vehicular regulation. Second is driver regulation and third is the road user regulations. So first let us discuss what are the vehicular regulations are. So to understand it first we have to do registration of any vehicle which is known as RC book. Then after we have to classify vehicles according to their weight, size and design. Say for example if I talk about a four wheeler then it can be separated as a heavy truck also. Even size and design of normal car and a heavy truck is so different. So we have to keep all the constraints in mind. Lastly, we have basic knowledge of construction of any vehicle. Even insurance of any vehicle plays a key role while we want to claim it. So it is all about this vehicular regulation. Now let us discuss our second part which is driver regulation. So, driver regulation can be done by licensing. As we know, a person must give driving test to get license, where the driving skills are tested. And without license, driving any vehicle is a crime. Next is physical fitness and age of driver. That matters. Say for example, we prefer experienced driver who is not too young and also not too old. Because... With age, psychological condition as well as the quick decision taking skill reduces. While in younger stage, with aggression, chances of accident are still there. And lastly, we will discuss about disqualification and endorsement of licenses and speed laws. Motoring offenses can incur fines and endorsements. An endorsement on your driving license means that you have been given points which will remain on your license until they expire. Depending on the type of offense committed, this is usually 4 or 11 years. Now, next is road user. Here, we have to also think for pedestrians. Crossroads where their pedestrians are crossing. Always walk on footpath. Where there is no footpath, walk in the right side margin of the road so that you can see the traffic coming in the opposite direction. Next is about cyclist. We should provide separate route for cyclists to ensure their safety and comfort on the road. Last but not least, we should provide facility to motorcyclists. Now let us move to our second topic for today's lecture which is all about traffic control devices. The various aids and devices used to control, regulate and guide traffic may be called as traffic control devices. 
broadly these fall into five categories first is traffic signs then traffic signal traffic lights traffic marking and traffic islands now let us discuss traffic signs first so basically it is classified as regulatory signs warning signs and the informatory signs so let's discuss regulatory signs first regulatory signs are mean to inform the road users of certain laws regulation and prohibitions it is further classified into two types where the first is directional road signs and second is the prohibitory signs here directional road signs have blue background and white symbols different type of regulatory road signs are like compulsory turn left compulsory turn right compulsory turn left ahead compulsory turn right ahead compulsory keep right compulsory keep left and compulsory proceed ahead now let's discuss prohibitory signs they have basically white background red border and black symbols different types of prohibitory signs are like no parking no entry no left turn no right turn no overtaking no stopping no u turn no horn speed limit and the width limit but here are few different cases like stop sign and give way which has their unique symbols that's all about regulatory signs now let's move to the next topic warning signs so warning signs are used to warn the road user of certain hazardous condition that exist on or adjacent to the roadway warning signs are to great help in ensuring safety of traffic they have white background red border and black symbols signs are to be located at sufficient distances are 120 90 60 and 40 meter respectively on national highway or state highway or major district road or ordinary district road and village road different types of warning signs are like left hand curve then after right hand curve narrow bridge man at work on even road narrow road round about t intersection side road right and cross road so now last type of traffic sign is informatory road signs these signs are meant to provide information on direction destination road side facility etc to the road user these road signs helps a driver in saving time reaching destination while looking around these signs are normally blue in color different types of informatory signs are filling station restaurant hotel parking first aid post refreshment hospital bus stop route maker sign and road junction approach now let's discuss next topic traffic signals so a traffic signal is used as an in instructing device that indicates the road user to act according to the displayed sign following the traffic signal ensure road safety and to make things simple to understand these signals have been using a universal color code there are various type of traffic signals are used first is fixed time signal these signals are set to repeat regularly a cycle of red amber yellow and green lights depending upon the traffic intensities the timing of each phase of the cycle is predetermined fixed time signals are the simplest type of automatic traffic signals which are electrically operated but the drawback of this signal is that the cycle of red yellow and green goes on irrespective whether on any road there is any traffic or not also traffic in the heavy stream has to stop 
at end phase. Second type is manually operated system. In this system or in this type of signal, the traffic police watches the traffic demand for a suitable point during the peak hour at the intersections and varies the timing of these phases and cycle accordingly. Third type is traffic actuated or the automatic signals. In these signals, the timing of the phase and cycle are changed according to the traffic demand. In semi-actuated signal, the normal green phase of a traffic stream may be extended up to a certain period of time for allowing the vehicles to clear off the intersections. While in fully actuated signals, computers assign the right of way for the traffic movement on turn basis of traffic flow demand. Fourth type is spatial traffic signals. These signals are used to warn the traffic. When there is a red flashing signal, the drivers of vehicle must stop before entering the nearest crosswalk at the intersection or at a stop line where marked. Now, let's move to the next traffic control device, traffic lights. It is raised source of light on the edge of a road which is often mounted on a lamp column or pole either on the side of the road or within the median or suspended on a wire above the road to provide illumination. Street lighting can be provide safety benefits at mid block and intersection locations and can also improve safety for pedestrians particularly at crossing roads. Now let's move to the next traffic control devices which is traffic markings. They are made of lines, patterns, words, symbols or reflectors on pavement, curb, divider or on the fixed objects. They are made using paints in contrast, color and brightness. There are number of types of road markings. Let's discuss all in detail. First type is pavement marking. As shown on the screen, White strips in the middle of the road pavement is known as pavement marking. This strip can be marked differently for different purposes. Like here, it is marked as dotted line, which indicate one can change the lane, while a solid line indicates one cannot change the lane or overtaking the vehicles. It helps in smooth and harmonious flow of traffic along guided lanes. Next type is curb marking. Here you can see black and yellow color strip which is raised portion at the edge of pavement along the side of road which is known as curbs. They are painted with either alternative black and white strips too. They divide pedestrian walkway and the roadway. It helps to guide rainwater on the roadway to the drainage line. Now. Next type is object marking. Sometimes objects adjacent to the carriageway may pose some obstruction to the flow of traffic. Objects such as subway piers and abutments or the culverts, head walls, small temples or tree etc. are some example for such obstructions. These cause serious hazard to the flow of traffic and must be marked to reduce accident rate. Now next type is reflector unit marking. It is a safety device used on roads which reflect with light at night. They are made of plastic ceramic, thermoplastic paints etc. It is available in different shape and color. Mainly placed on the changing line of the lanes and the edges of pavement. It helps to identify boundary of lanes while night driving. Now next type is road delineators. As shown on screen, delineators are tall pylons similar to traffic cones mounted on the road surface or along the edge of a road. They are used to channelize the traffic. They are usually seen on dividers of the bridges and maintenance work. 
now let us discuss traffic islands so traffic islands are raised area constructed within the roadway to establish physical channels through which the vehicular traffic may be guided this can be classified into four types based on the functions first type is divisional island it is also called as divider as shown in the figure they are intended to separate opposite flow of traffic on a highway with four or more lanes by thus dividing the highway into one way roadway so that the head on collision can be eliminated next is the channelizing island they are used to guide the traffic into proper channel through the intersection area it is the separation or regulation of conflicting traffic movements into definite path of travel by traffic islands or pavement marking to facilitate the safe and orderly movements of both vehicles as well as pedestrians next is pedestrian island it is a small section of pavement or sidewalk completely surrounded by asphalt or other road materials where pedestrian can stop before finishing crossing a road it is typically used when a street is wide as the pedestrian crossing can be too long for some individual to cross in one traffic light signal they may also be seen on road with higher speed limits it reduces the exposure time experienced by a pedestrian in the intersections last is rotary islands the raised platform of suitable shapes built on the road intersections are called traffic island or rotary island the main object of providing a rotary are to eliminate the necessity of topping even for crossing streams of vehicles and to reduce the area of conflict the crossing of vehicles is avoided by allowing the vehicles to merge into the streams around the road tree and then to diverge out to the desire radiating road now let's discuss our last topic for today's lecture which is intersections so an intersection is defined as the general area where two or more highway joint or cross within which are included the roadways and roadside facilities for traffic movement in that area the efficiency safety speed cost of operation and capacity of road system very much depend on the intersection design various forms of intersections are like t y multiple and cross while in skewed one inclined roads is connected with main roads here skewed cross is combination of cross and skewed next is staggered which is different than cross intersection as in cross roads connected to one point while in staggered it is not connected at one point as it is a staggered it means in uneven manner last is skewed staggered which is again a combination of staggered and skewed now let's move to the classification of intersection it is classified into two broad groups first is at grade and second is grade separated intersection first we will discuss intersection at grade in this all roads meet about the same level these intersections can be further classified into three types like unchannelized intersection channelized intersection and lastly the rotary intersection first is unchannelized intersection in this type of intersection there is no provision of traffic island or divider to channelize the traffic flow let's see example of unchannelized intersections first is t plane intersection second is t flared intersection here in flared at the intersection the width of road is increase for less congestion of traffic and the last is cross plane intersection and fourth is cross flared intersection 
and lastly the skew plane intersection now let's move to the second type of intersection at grade which is channelized intersection in this type of intersection traffic island or divider are provided to channelize the flow let's see example of channelized intersection here first is t partial channelized intersection in which island or divider are provided only on the main road you can clearly shown on screen now second is t complete channelized intersection in which all connecting roads are having the island or divider for purpose of traffic flow next is cross complete channelization as you can see on figure all four connecting roads are having islands and the last is q partial channelization because of part partial inclined road is not having island only major road are having islands now let's move to the third type of intersection at grade which is rotary intersection a rotary intersection is a specialized form of intersection at grade in which the traffic moves in one direction round a central island for keep to the left rule the vehicle approaching the intersections are forced to move around the central islands in an orderly manner and weave out of the rotary into the their respective desired directions let's discuss the various types of rotary intersections first is circular second is elliptical third is turbine type and last is tangent intersection so these all four types are based on their shape now let's move into the second type of intersection which is grade separated intersection in this type of intersections intersecting road are separated by difference in level thus eliminating the crossing problem this type of intersection cause least delay and hazard to the crossing traffic it increases traffic safety and gives efficient operation of traffic flow let's discuss the example of grade separated intersections first is diamond interchange which is a popular form in urban locations where major and minor roads are crossing at different levels as shown on screen it is designed for relatively narrow right of way of major roads second is cloud leaf interchange its name comes from one leaf having same shape which is shown on screen this is a four leg interchange with a single structure it is popular and used when two high volume and high speed roads are intersecting with each other its main advantage is there are two points of entry and exit on each roadway the first exit is provided before the cross road structure which allows right turn movement and the second exit immediately after the cross road structure which allows for left turn movements its main disadvantage is the u turns are long and operationally difficult and slow and last is rotary type of grade separated intersections you can see in the figure it is similar to the rotary interchange which is discussed just before this topic except in this type intersecting roads are not at same level it is also a four leg interchange which is used where land area is less and u turn are easy its disadvantage is low traffic capacity and straight traffic on one road is required to view the turning traffic from the other road that's all about this lecture i hope you all understand traffic regulation various traffic control devices and types of intersection see you soon in the next lecture thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe my youtube channel civil edunext